I want to talk about probably several things here today, but they're all going to gel together. And how many know that uh, Jesus Christ was a Jew? And how many know that we're in a Jewish religion? Amen? We want to declare it the United States and all the Christianity is ours. Hey, it all started over in Jerusalem. Amen? It all started over there with a man that came and hung on the cross for you and I. Amen? And as we read the Bible and we read the Old Testament, we'll find out that that's really, really Jewish stuff, amen, that's going on. And we read the New Testament, we find out that's really, really Jewish stuff, amen, because they talk about the Jewish festivals and all that. How many know that there's, there's been four blood moons this year, amen, starting four blood moons together? And we got one more that needs to be taken care of, and that's towards the end of this September here that we're in. But we're also at the end of a time called the Shemitah also. And that was a, a Jewish time where every seven years the Jews were to put their land to a side. And on the seventh year they didn't raise any crops, they just looked to God to take care of them for the six years prior, that they would have stored things up ready for that seventh year, amen? And the Jews got away from it, like a lot of people, as mankind kind of gets away from God, they got away from it, and for hundreds of years, they didn't keep that. And God went and took them and put them in exile, under bondage, because they didn't keep that seven-year Shemitah. Now, we're actually, today is the end of the Shemitah year, but it's also the end of the super Shemitah. But... I'm here today to tell you that we're not at the end. We're at the beginning, a beginning of something happening to our country and to the world that's never happened before. How many know that there is so-called uh, an exit out of Syria all through the world that Muslims are leaving Syria, leaving that area over there and going into Germany and we're taking 10,000 but probably a hundred thousand Muslims into this country. How many know that? That's a big thing. That's a big deal that's going on. You might not, you might not watch TV, you might not listen to the news, but that's a big deal that's going on. And what's being done here right before your eyes is the Muslim religion is being spread throughout all the world. Egypt said, we don't want them. They're already Muslim. We don't want them. But they told Germany, we'll build you 200 mosques, 200 churches for the Muslims. Isn't that amazing? How many know that down in Florida at, a, at an airport, we just got done building a, a, a Muslim mosque so they could worship their God? Our country did. When was the last time that they're building us churches? Christian churches. You know what I would have told Egypt if I was? Because Germany is supposed to be a Christian nation. I would have told them, no, you can forget the mosque, but you can build us Christian churches, 200 of them. You can build that, and we'll convert every one of them to Christianity. But they didn't do that. You know what's going on in Germany? And I'm not here really to talk about Germany as much as the United States of America. They have not had kids, and they, what has happened is their workforce is on the downswing now, and they don't have people to take the place so their economy can keep, keep going. So they're taking these refugees in, going to train them, put them to work, so they think. But I'll tell you what's going on behind the scenes. As the Muslim religion is being spread out all through the world right now, is being spread out all through the world. We as Christians must do this. We must get serious with our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because it's being stolen from us. It's being stolen from us. Through the laws that are created by the high courts to what the people are given into here today. That the, the, the gays want to get married and the heterosexuals don't want to get married. Amen? You tell me that the hat isn't turned on backwards. Amen? But I believe this, I believe that our Lord Jesus Christ, that I believe that we still got a God in heaven. It said, but there is a God in heaven, Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven, don't need to go there. There is a God in heaven that, that revealeth his secrets. 
There is a God in heaven that's in control, and he says he reveals his secrets. He reveals his secrets to his people. And in 2 Thessalonians, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that man shall not come, that man of perdition, that man that is against Christianity, that man that doesn't, doesn't like Christians, but he does declare himself as God. There is a man coming on the earth that it says, Except that day, fall, uh, except there come a falling away first, that man of perdition will not be revealed except, except there come a falling away first of Christianity, the stronghold of Christianity, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What's been happening for nearly a century is the church has been fallen down, fallen down, and not serious about Jesus Christ, not serious about the scriptures and understanding the scriptures. But this is what, you're not going to get rid of religion in this country. Even though the United States do, uh, wants to boot out religion out of the schools and everything, I'm going to tell you, religion is, is fine and well in this country. It's just the wrong religion. It's just the wrong religion. And that man, that man of perdition, that man of sin, that's gonna, that, that is gonna exalt himself above all that is called God, that he's the one that makes the rules. He's gonna sit in the Holy of Holies one day, and you'll see it in Israel. He's gonna sit in the Holy of Holies declaring that he is God, that he is God, and he takes the place of Christ. I could tell you who that is right now. There's only one man on earth that struts around declaring that he is God. And the, and the Bible says that's the man of perdition. That's the Antichrist. What it means is he's not against so much Christianity. He just declares himself that he's God. And he changes Christianity. He changes the truth. I said he's not so much against it. He's against the real fine principles of Christianity. Like selling out to Jesus Christ. I believe that our country, because it has sold out to the devil... And it, it has catered to the devil. It has catered to this world that Jeremiah talks about it in Jeremiah 51. It talks about the United States of America. I believe that we got something coming that's going to devastate this United States of America in one day. I believe that, that when God gives us the Jewish festivals and like the Shemitah, telling us that every seven years you're either going to be blessed or you're going to be cursed. That we're finding out, even through the stock market, it's fallen like 2,000 points from where it was here just 30 days ago. It's, cl it's coming down. But that isn't even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a devastation to a country that has declared itself as Christians. That we really need to hunker down in the Lord because I believe we got hard times coming. We right now, we get our Social Security, we get a lot of benefits from the government. I believe that one day those will be cut off. I believe they'll be cut off because we got judgment coming to the United States of America. There are those that have, that have declared this for over 40 years. There is a man that the Lord gave him a vision over 40 years ago, and he's, he's talking about it, and he said there is there is something coming and he said the Lord showed me it's a, it's a, it's a crater that's coming not a crater but a, uh, at like an asteroid it's an asteroid a, like, almost like a comet but it's an asteroid that's coming and it's going to hit in the sea by Puerto Rico now that's his story that's his story but I have to say this that God gives bits and pieces to this person and that person I can only tell you the dream two dreams that I had that this storm came suddenly and I warned the people and it was like in the days of Lot I was warning people in this dream and it was like I was talking to somebody with Alzheimer's that really had it bad and they couldn't they just couldn't get it down and I was warning them and the person was my dad he was still alive and I was telling him about the storm coming, but he just, he just uh, I would say it, and he just acted like he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't comprehend it. And I looked out, and I saw the storm, and it was coming quickly, and I ran for the basement. 
and I couldn't hardly make it there. I didn't think I was going to make it. That's how swift it's going to hit. I had another dream, and the dream was this, is that I was in the room showing my house to people. I was showing them my house, and, and I turned around in the room. It was half full of water. I believe that Jeremiah talked about Babylon. He talked about Babylon, and I believe we're mystery Babylon. The United States is a mystery. What was Babylon like? The Babylon in the olden days was where King Nebuchadnezzar was at, and it was a mighty country. It ruled the world. He had a dream that he ruled the world, and Daniel told him what the dream meant but that God was going to cut it down but leave a stump. You have to read that. You have to understand that Babylon was very rich. This country is mystery Babylon because the United States wasn't even a country. When Jerusalem was thriving and everything, the United States wasn't even around. But it's a mystery Babylon, and the mystery Babylon in Revelations in Jeremiah also 51 talks about it makes nations rich. Anyone that deals with the United States becomes wealthy. How many know that? That's to be true, too. But I believe from what I've seen and what I've heard and what's being the dreams that are going on, even in this church, that are being told. And it isn't because we talk about it all the time. These are, we were praying the other night, give us dreams, God, give us a heads up. And two people had dreams of a flood coming. But I don't believe it's here. I believe it's on the East Coast. Let me say this, and I'll declare this to you. Before 9-11 happened, the prophecy came in this church that a devastation is coming to the United States, and God says that only a few men know. I believe that that was 9-11. But the Lord also said, after that, She will not repent, talking about the United States. She will not repent, and I'll hit her in her side. There are people that have had not only dreams, but spoke to by the Lord. And I I don't take one person's, like, view on this. I I take a lot, and I listen to these people. And I says, okay, you say what you say. Let's see what this other person has to say. And they're all in different time frames. They said there's there's a storm there's a tidal wave, there's a tsunami going to hit the East Coast, and it's going to come in 100 miles, anywhere from 200 feet to 400 feet high. I take that with the dreams that I've had and the prophecy that was at this church before I even knew anything about that. And the Lord said, I will hit her in her side. She will not repent, and I will hit her in her side. Since that time, we've passed gay marriage. We have not stopped abortion. We slaughter them. We tear the little babies apart. We sell them. We sell the peace. That's only what we know. And God says she will not repent, and I will hit her in her side. What's her side? And I didn't know what that meant. I thought, okay, you're going you're gonna to hit the United States in the side, and, she's, and whatever that means, that could be the East Coast getting hit. That's the side of our country. If that comes in and floods New York City and wipes her out, let me read you something in Jeremiah that says it says this and I thought this was so amazing in in uh, Jeremiah 51 42 the sea is come up upon Babylon the sea has come up upon Babylon she is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof really the sea has come up upon Babylon. You just think about this. You said, we're, we're in Illinois. Praise the Lord for that. And I thank God for that. But think about the East Coast. There are people that have had visions that total, all Florida is wiped out. And in inland, 100 miles, people are dead. When I heard this, when I heard this, I thought, golly, and you pull all these things together. So I'm there, I'm thinking about last night, I'm thinking about what can I talk about? What can I talk about? And I had nothing but this on my mind. So you're going to get just fragments and bits and pieces. I'm going to, and is it real? I think God is real. I think the Shemitah is real. I think the blessing and cursings of God is real. 
I believe God rules the earth from heaven. I believe God rules our life and we'll just let him rule it in a good way. I believe God gives life and he takes life away. But he is a just God and a good God. In Revelations 18, I'm thinking about this, this meteor and I'm thinking about this rock and this is, what, this is what's been said by scientists. It's two and a half miles wide. It's two and a half miles wide. And when it hits, it'll create a thousand foot wave that will hit Puerto Rico and go inland for quite a ways. They expect 2.5 million people to die in that in Puerto Rico. 2.5 million people. Is it real? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, how real is it? Well, in Revelations 18.21, is it possible that something like this could hit and it'll travel at the, at the rate of 400 mile an hour to the United States? That's pretty fast. You go on a ship that's running 400 mile an hour, you can make some tracks. We'll be in England in about a half hour. In Revelations 18.21, let me find it here. It says this, and I'm, I'm just, and I, I flipped the page open here this morning, and I look at this, and I thought, oh my golly. And it says this, and a mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Really? You want me to read that again? Say, I don't know if I believe that. This is what it said. And a mi this is out of the Bible. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. And then they, then they said, there's something coming. And cast it into the sea. Where is it at? Into the sea. So what did it do? It created a wave, obviously, saying, and a great millstone into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon, New York City, New York City is the great city Babylon. Do you know when, 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 uh, when they legalized the sale of gold? Who is that president always did this? What was his name? Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. When he legalized the move of gold, that the public could do that. Do you know that there was, in one day, in New York City, more gold was exchanged, was bought, than if you put together all the time of gold being exchanged in the world of all times. In one day, there was more gold exchanged than all the time in history put together. Just that one day. That's Great Babylon. That's Great Babylon. New York City is Great Babylon, but we as a country are Babylon. In Jeremiah 51, verse 43, it says, her cities are desolate, verse 44, and the nations shall not flow together anymore unto him, which is, I believe this, the nations will not flow anymore unto him. It's the nations of the world, the United Nations in the New York City. They'll not gather together no more. This is out, this is out of Jeremiah. And my people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. This is what he says, come out of her, my people, and never go back again. In that, that's even a song, a Christian song. Come out of her, my people, and never go back again. God's calling his Jews back home. But we are spiritual Jews. We are Christians. We are his people also. And you might say, well, what should we do? Should we leave the United States? Listen, I'm here to, express, I'm here to, to spread evangelism. I'm here to spread Jesus Christ. I'm here to do the work of the Lord. Amen? Because I know this country is not going to turn to God unless something terrible happens to it. And I predict that there is something terrible going to happen to this country. And not only me, but others have had dreams and had dreams even last night about a mighty storm is coming to this country. 
a mighty storm has come into this country. One person told me this morning that they said, last night I had a dream. I know it was God, Pastor. I just know it was God because they don't have dreams about, about this sort of thing. They said, I looked out, I looked out, and I saw a mighty tornado, and it was like two houses away. I didn't know if I was going to make it to the basement. It was just like my dream. I didn't know if I was going to make it to the basement. And he said, I went down to the basement and I found a place by the steps and I hung on. And he says, I could feel my whole house. He says, it was raging up there and I could feel my whole house turning, turning, even the basement turning. Well, we know basements don't turn. Tornadoes just take the house off the top. But his whole thing was turning. What's that saying? That his walk with the Lord is going to creak a little bit because of what's coming to the United States of America. And he says, and it seemed like it lasted for 10 or 15 seconds, and then a calm came. His house stood. His house stood. Another woman had, had, a, had a dream that she was in the basement and there was boxes. And she got down there and water was coming in. And she thought, Frantically, I got to do something. We got to ga gather this stuff up. We got to take care of it. It was an alarm, is what it was. There's something coming. And in all these, all these dreams, water is involved. I thought that was strange. And so I read these scriptures and I read about the angel and the millstone and I read about what, what in Jeremiah. 51 where it talks about and a wave covers Babylon and I'm thinking surely could this happen to the east coast could this be something that's going on and I think very well because the Bible talks about it but, but God says this after a mighty angel took a mighty stone and cast it into the sea and the violence and all that with great Babylon it says also in verse 24, why is this in the United States of America? What Donald Trump say? He says, we're not going to allow the Christians, we're not going to allow another religion, Muslims, whoever they are, to cut the throats and behead our Christianity overseas anymore. We're not going to allow this. He says, I'm not going to put up with it. But we have put up with it. And we have not called it terrorism. When those 21 men got their heads cut off, we did nothing. We did nothing to avenge them. We did nothing. We did, all we did is make calls and said, we're sure sorry, did we offend you in any way? Is that what we are in the United States? I go along, not that I, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump or anything, but that point of view I go along with. We're not going to put up with this anymore. But it says, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints. And all that were slain upon the earth. In her. Why? Why in the United States of America? Because we're able to put a stop to it. I think it was Iran that was holding hostages when Donald, Ronald Reagan came into office. I'm thinking. I do remember this. That the day he was swore in, they were released. They were released. There's hostages being held right now in Iran. And on 9-11, what did we do? Sign an agreement. Signed an agreement that they could go ahead and have nuclear power. That would create nuclear weapons. On 9-11. Most of the church is asleep and they don't really know what's going on out there. But this is really de a devastating thing. They're just trying to get to church. <laughs> do you see how crazy it is? And things are going on right before us. And God is still God in the heavens. Well, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I... You will believe it if it ever happens. You, can you imagine what would happen if that happens? What's being prophesied? What's being said? I had a dream. You can, you can get into the news and you can find person after person that says God is warning us. They're Christians. They've been Christians for a long time. God is warning us. This is what I saw. And they're all seeing the same thing. And I'm, we're having dreams. Now, if they were seeing something, I wouldn't have anything. There's no alarm in me. I'd say, yeah, I think it's just one person here, another person. But it isn't like that. It isn't like that at all. It's this whole thing's altogether different. 
I think we as the United States, as Great Babylon, has made nations rich, we also have governed other nations. And tell me we haven't. We've, ta we've gotten it, gone over in the Middle East. We decide what nation rises, what nation falls. If you don't believe me, ask Saddam. Ask Gaddafi. Ask Egypt. We put the Muslim Brotherhood in there and they kicked them out. I can only thank God for that. But my God shall supply all your need and, it, and we didn't say needs a thing that you really need shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's where you go. And from day to day and for the rest of your life that's where you're going to go. That's where you should go. But my God shall supply all my needs. This country, I believe, there's judgment coming to the world. I already know it is because I read it in the Bible. Mystery Babylon, I believe it's the United States of America without even a doubt. Without a doubt. But I believe this, that the God of heaven and earth is on my side and on your side if you'll follow Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to have kids and I want to have a family. Well, I'm sorry. Maybe you still have time for that. I don't know. I don't know what the time frame is, but I do know this, that when this thing happens, it's already happening in our lives. Why do we, why do we think it won't happen in our country? Our lives are already turned upside down if we don't follow Jesus Christ. Why do we think it wouldn't happen to a country? And the Bible talks about it happening to a country. Amen? Why do we think that it won't happen in the United States of America? Why? Because it's never happened. We were attacked in World War II, but it wasn't on this soil. We are just like, what are we going to do? And this is what God wants you to do. He wants you to prepare. He wants you to prepare spiritually, but he wants you to prepare otherwise too. Because if this storm is coming, you better have more than one can of beans on your shelves. Well, I went to Aldi's and it's gone. You better be prepared. You, better, you, you need to. What does God say in the natural? He said this, come out of her, my people, and never go back again, that you would not partake of the anger of the Lord. So let's say this, what if God's people don't come out of her? And she totally commanded, they'll partake of the plagues that's coming upon her. Yes, they will. Will God be with them? I believe this, yes. He'll make a way, but what does he want? He wants his people, and I will say spiritually, come out of the ways of the United States and don't be like an ostrich and stick your head in the sand and say, it'll be okay, I won't prepare, I won't do anything. No, you get next to Jesus. You get next to God. I will say this, I'm not the only preacher in the United States of America that's preaching this. I am not. There is stuff going on and we need to hang in there, amen? So, and, we, and if you need to change, change. And if you need to prepare, prepare. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.